Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar on how to solve common mold release problems. My name is John Wolf, and I'm joined today with our presenters, Daryl Taylor, Elizabeth Wilson, and David Sheffield. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. While Daryl, Elizabeth, and David are speaking, if you have any questions, please submit those to the Q&A box, and the team will answer those at the end. We're also live tweeting today's webinar and welcome you to join the conversation on Twitter using hashtag mold release. In case you experience any issues with audio, we are recording today's webinar and we'll be sending a link to view. Finally, we have a short survey following today's webinar for you to provide feedback. With that being said, Daryl, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, John. Hello, my name is Daryl Taylor. I'm an application engineer with Parker Lord. So our agenda today is how a mold release agent works and how to remove molded parts. Uh, we'll discuss common mold release problems. We will also discuss types of mold releases. We will go over and review new mold release solution, Lock Release 237. And we will determine if Lock Release 237 is compatible with your process. First, we'll start out with how to easily remove molded parts, processes, and best practices. So a mold release is a chemical used to prevent materials from bonding to mold surfaces. Without mold release, the rubber and or metal substrate would become fused to the mold surface, resulting in stuck molds, scrap, and difficult cleanup. Molding apart can be summarized in the five steps listed on this slide. All the steps are equally important when it comes to your finished product. So essentially, whenever uh, you start your process for making a part, the, the, the one step is to receive metals. And those metals will have some sort of oils or contaminants from machining. And you have to clean those metals in order to create a good surface for the, uh, the chemlock adhesive to adhere to. And then before you start molding, you apply mold release to your mold, and then you load your metal parts into a rubber mold and vulcanize. So you can see in the, in the pictures on the right-hand side towards the bottom, there's with mold release. Uh, they're nice, clean parts. You know, they came out of the mold real well. Uh, without mold release, you get stuck parts in the mold, and that's, that's what that picture is uh, showing. So while we're talking about uh, clean molds, um, let's launch our first poll question. How often do you clean your molds? So metal to rubber bonding is something that we do. You know, we apply chem lock to metal and we try to actually make the rubber stick to metal. So with the mold release, we are essentially trying to keep that same rubber from adhering to the mold. Mold fouling essentially occurs uh, when the elastomer and chemlock adhesive, they heat up and cause some gases and some volatiles, uh, which, which can lead to uh, mold fouling. It allows the rubber to stick to the mold. The overspray uh, is essentially when you apply too much material to the mold. And the carrier or the solvent or water, in this case, is uh, doesn't get a chance to flash off, and you end up with too much material in one spot, and it will actually build up on the mold. Um, it it can also transfer to the part that can affect post bond operations as well. If you don't apply enough or under spray, you have inadequate coverage of the surface, which leads to torn rubber off of the part, that essentially your part is going to be scrap. Along with uh, overspray, the transfer to the part can also be caused by overspray, but typically it's due to uh, applying mold release and not curing it properly. It basically is uh, not stuck to the mold. It's not bonded to the mold in order to do its job and keep the rubber from sticking to the mold, it actually sticks to the rubber. Post-processing, when you have a transfer of mold release to the rubber is going to be very difficult. It'll require special cleaning of the rubber 
probably some sort of mechanical abrasion so that you can get any of your uh, paints or coatings you want to adhere to the rubber. One thing that's worth mentioning is flash rusting. Aqueous based mold releases can cause flash rusting on a mold, uh, especially if it's applied below the, uh, the boiling point of 100 degrees C. Once that happens, um, it's not detrimental immediately. It is, it can be generally wiped off with a rag, the flash rust can, but if it's left, it, it can cause uh, other problems with your mold. So the types of mold releases and chemistries and performance we will discuss next. The three most common types of mold release are sacrificial, semi-permanent, and permanent. The sacrificial type are very cheap. They require reapplication every cycle. Uh, they, they may cause bond and or knit problems within the elastomer itself uh, due to the, the material does not adhere to the mold and it can easily sweep off uh, causing uh, your post-bond painting issues. Uh, the semi-permanent are relatively inexpensive and less likely to sweep. If it did sweep, would cause bond and knit problems. They need to be applied to a clean mold. Uh, so you gotta make sure your mold's clean for the, the semi-permanent type releases to adhere to the mold. The permanent types of mold released are the most expensive, require special processing ovens to heat the mold to high temperatures, maybe in the range of 300 degrees C, something like that. They may still need periodic touch up and the permanent does allow for the most cycles before needing to pull your mold to clean it but it will eventually still need to be pulled and cleaned. Now that we've covered the types of mold releases, we wanna hear from you. On average, how often do you apply mold release? Okay, so more on types of mold releases. We talked about the, the, the generic uh, categories. Uh, here's some chemistry. Uh, the, the PDMS, the PTFEs, soaps, and waxes are typically the, the four probably most common mold releases. That there's a few others you can see listed on the screen, but they're they're less uh, less common in the market, maybe for specialty type applications. Um, when you're looking at mold releases, you know what we we like to have low surface energy, good wetting, good adhesion heat resistance, and chemical. Looking back at the categories, uh, the soaps and waxes are generally in the sacrificial category. Uh, the PTFE and the PDMS are generally going to be in the semi-permanent category, uh, with PDMS also in the permanent category. Now we will cover the overview of our new product, Lock Release 237. What is Lock Release 237? It is an aqueous PDMS based fast curing mold release. It's designed for multiple elastomers to provide an anti stick coating. Multiple heats per application can be achieved. Uh, and we have it available in many different uh, dilutions. We can go anything from full, full dilution to one to one. Uh, and that's listed on a couple slides ahead. You can see the elastomers listed there, EPDMs, natural, nitrile, uh, molding processes, injection, compression, and transfer. Block release 237 will work with all of these. Um, and in general, compression will give you the best results when it's when any mold release, and, and especially with lock release 237. Uh, transfer and injection will be slightly less than compression, but that is, is general for any mold release. Lock release 237 is extremely versatile. It's available in different dilutions, volumes, can save you money on manufacturing efficiencies, allowing for multiple molding cycles. It reduces defects caused by sticking, reduces defects 
cause from sweeping of the mold release into the part. Uh, th this product does not sweep. It adheres to the mold and does not get into the rubber or cause bond problems. Here we got the, uh, the multiple sizes, anywhere from a pail to a drum, a tote. The dilutions are the concentrated. You can get one to one, one to two, one to three. If you need a different dilution, uh, I believe we could probably supply you with whatever it is that you would like. Contact your account manager. Now I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to talk about our testing and trials. Thank you, Daryl. Now Dave and I will go into more detail about the procedure for applying Lock Release 237 to optimize performance, as well as some of the testing and production trials that were conducted during development of this new product. So there are three steps to applying Lock Release 237, which may be similar to other mold releases that you're familiar with. The first is to prepare the mold surface by removing previous mold release residue and other contaminants by plastic bead blasting or dry ice blasting. And Lock Release 237 is recommended to be spray applied, so the second step is to apply three light coats using a fine mist spray onto the hot mold surface between 100 to 200 degrees C. And Lock Release 237 can be diluted with deionized water if desired before application. And lastly, Lock Release 237 should be cured on the hot mold for about five minutes before proceeding with your molding process. And if you do find that spot sticking occurs after molding, you can touch up the mold release coating by reapplying Lock Release 237 on the sticking area and allowing time to cure. And the table on the right here shows typical properties of Lock Release 237. It's a white liquid with a density and viscosity similar to that of water. Now moving on to some of the testing that we performed during development of Lock Release 237. This chart illustrates that Lock Release 237 does not cause bond problems during normal application. You can see that there is almost 100% rubber retention for each of the parts at the different dilution levels. And for this test, we considered normal application to be two to three light coats. And we performed this using natural rubber in a compression mold. This chart compares Lock Release 237 with two competitor mold releases at heavy application. And we used five coats and 10 coats to illustrate this. We did not see any bond issues with Lock Release 237, whereas we saw significant bond issues with the competitor mold releases at this heavier application. Now, Dave will talk about a couple more tests that we performed. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, in addition to the molding testing, we uh, used a special test that we developed to measure the adhesion of mold release to the mold. A good mold release should adhere to the mold surface without heavy buildup to prevent molding defects, heavy application, and buildup of mold release can result in elastomer cracks and poor knit strength. The photo on the right gives an example of the type of defects that you can see uh, caused by mold release that's too heavy or is built up too much into a mold. You can see in the photo, there are a number of defects in that rubber surface that look like cracks, knit problems, or just general inclusions from the mold release. During this testing, we developed a method to measure the effect of mold release on the knit strength of elastomer. This chart shows that a control pad without any mold release effects has approximately 4,000 PSI tensile strength as measured per ASTM D412. Lock release 237 produced virtually no effect on the tensile strength of the elastomer. However, applications of competitor mold releases had significant effects on the knit strength of the elastomer due to sweep into the elastomer itself, causing cracks and poor knit strength. In addition to laboratory evaluations of mold release during development, we also performed production trials at our Bowling Green, Kentucky facility. During these trials, they selected three different part numbers, which were notorious for having molding problems or elastomer tearing uh, when releasing them from the mold. In comparison, 
block release 237 performed much better than the in-house mold release that they were currently using with one of the parts using a soft, sticky natural rubber compound, their current mold release needed to be applied every other heat to prevent problems with release of the parts from the mold. With Lock Release 237, they were able to get at least six heats, six good release heats from the mold release uh, without having to reapply and probably could have gotten more heats uh, during this test. At this time, we're going to open it up to any questions you, you might have. 